with a lot of awesome new games coming out like Valorant and Call of Duty Warzone um, and a lot of people starting to get into gaming on a PC. So we're gonna take a look at doing a really simple and easy PC build with an HP Elite Desk 800 G1. So this guy came out in about 2014 as an i7 4790 processor, eight gigs of RAM, an SSD. I got all of that on eBay for $150. So the real benefit of going with like an old office desktop, small form factor PC is that you get pretty good specs, either like an i5 or an i7, third or fourth generation, um, eight or sometimes 16 gigs of RAM. This one came with an SSD already plus an HDD. So a really good deal there. Um, and of course you get Windows 10 pre-installed. So when you're doing your own build, you know, from this, from scratch, from the ground up, Windows is honestly one of the bigger pieces of the build. It's $139 for Windows 10 Home and like $150 for Windows 10 Pro. Um, of course, you can run Windows for free and you'll just have a little activation uh, logo in the bottom of your screen. But this gives you sort of full Windows capabilities for a really low cost. And the other upside of building with you know a pre-owned system like this one is that you get all of your components for really really cheap so for 150 bucks we get an i7 4790 which is a four core eight thread cpu of course it's not overclockable being that it's not the k spec i7 4790 but still plenty of performance 3.2 gigahertz base clock and a boost clock in the upper three gigahertz range um, and we're getting ram hard drives ssd everything included in this package for 150 bucks. If you wanted to do sort of a bare bones, um, cheap, low end budget PC building from scratch. So let's say you use like the new Ryzen 3100 processor, that's hundred dollars. You have a motherboard that's gonna be 50 or 70 bucks, power supply, case, it all adds up. So you're looking probably like three to 400 bucks for like a really basic low end starter PC. Whereas here with our GTX 1650 and our HP Elite Desk 800 G1, we're only looking at 300 bucks. And for those who have never built a PC before and don't wanna take on you know, the full top to bottom build, this is a really great introduction. You know, you're, you're really only touching you know, RAM, hard drives, graphics card. So with this particular build, all it's gonna really be is a graphics card installation. Um, and then it's just pretty much download your games and go ahead and play. So we'll go through the process of actually just opening up this case uh, looking inside, seeing if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, how you would do that. Um, we're going to show the graphics card installation, of course. This one already came with an SSD, but I'll show you um, where that SSD would go, um, how you would have to go about replacing it, where your SATA ports are and things like that. So for this build, all we're really going to have to do is put in our GTX 1650 and we're good to go in game. Um, but with this kind of PC and several other ones, I've already done a build with an HP 8300 SFF, which you can check out as well. I'll put the link in the description below to that video. Um, there's like Lenovo Think Center, SFF PCs, Dell Optiplex PCs. There's plenty of opportunity to go with one of these already built systems from HP, Dell, Lenovo that come with a third or fourth gen i5 or i7 processor and just throw in a graphics card and you're good to go with gaming. And these processors are still going strong when it comes to gaming. Um, plus like other workloads, you'll see plenty of performance from a system like this. So we'll go ahead, take the system apart and install our GTX 1650. So when it comes to tearing down our HP Elite Desk 800 G1, all you're gonna have to do is lift up the lever on the back of the side panel and the side panel will of course come off. And for any access to DVD drive, hard drives, you're gonna to wanna to take off your front plastic panel. So there'll be three little tabs on the front of that. You're just gonna to wanna to lift those up and then the front panel will be able to fall off. There'll then be some little hook tabs on the bottom that you're just gonna to wanna to have to play with a little bit so you don't ruin those. And there we go. The front panel is then off. And then this is um, something that I'll be thinking of doing in the future is actually just customizing this front panel, make it look a little bit newer look a little bit cooler, um, but that's down the line. And now we're pretty much fully broken down. So if you wanna have access to, let's say your hard drive or your SSD, you would be able to lift this whole cage up and then you can install a hard drive here, you have access to your DVD drive and access to all of your 
plugs and RAM and things like that. But going into the system that we have here, so it came with a hard drive and then it also came with an SSD. So if we were to just pull up on our tab over here, we can then release the hard drive and you can pull up on this. And then down here, you can see our SSD. So we have our uh, 250 gig SSD and a 500 gig hard drive. So we can put our games on our hard drive and our OS and some other really often used programs on our SSD to make them boot really, really quick. Um, if you're buying a system that only has a hard drive, I would recommend that an SSD be one of your earlier upgrades just because it will make your system seem and it will make your system a lot faster. So I definitely recommend making that one of your first upgrades um, outside of the graphics card. So of course we have four games on this motherboard. So of course we could install another 24 gigs of RAM to bring our total up to 32 gigs of, of memory. Um, we could even install four 16 gig DIMMs and get 64 gigs of memory. For gaming, you really only need eight or 16. Um, of course, with only a single uh, RAM stick, we're only gonna be running in single channel. Um, so if you have the ability to get a second DIMM of eight gigabytes, or if your PC came with two four gigabyte DIMMs, um, that would be the best case scenario to completely optimize uh, your RAM and get as much performance out of your system as possible. Another thing that I would like to do when I first get one of these older refurbished PCs is to take off the CPU cooler and replace the thermal paste. Um, I'm not gonna do it in this video. I don't think it's really necessary. If you're just getting started um, with PC gaming and you're not really used to building a PC, we'll just leave that there. And the only thing we'll do is install our graphics card. So with this system, we only have a 250 watt power supply or I believe it's actually a 270 watt power supply. We have no external GPU connectors. So we're gonna have to get a GPU that is one low profile to fit inside of our small form factor PC case, as well as one that does not require an extra six pin or eight pin power adapter for the GPU. So that is why we went with the Gigabyte OC low profile GTX 1650. So the really, the only cards you can get in low profile would be a GTX 1050, a 1050 Ti, or a 1650. So I went with the 1650 because for the most part, a GTX 1050 is still going for around 120 to $130 new. A GTX 1050 Ti is around 150, and this 1650 is also $150. So we went with the GTX 1650. So you get the newer Turing architecture from NVIDIA, four gigs of VRAM, um, whereas the 1050 only has two gigs of VRAM, the 1050 Ti does have four gigs, but it's also on the older architecture from NVIDIA. Um, and of course the 1650 is the lowest end card in the NVIDIA lineup, both the 16 series cards and of course the 20 series RTX cards, but it'll still be plenty of performance for most online games like a Call of Duty or a Valorant or a Fortnite. You'll be able to play all of those games on this card. Um, and I'll show you guys that at the end of the video, we'll go through those three games actually. So we'll go through Call of Duty, Valorant, and Fortnite, and we'll test everything on our 4790 and our 1650. So now, unboxing our 1650. Extremely simple packaging from Gigabyte, um, but we can take the graphics card out of its bag. Simple as that, and we'll get our low profile bracket out from here as well. So this is all you're gonna need is your card and your bracket. And all we're gonna have to do is take off uh, these two standoffs as well as these two screws. Um, so this card comes with a HDMI output as well as a display port and a VGA output. So plenty of opportunity um, in terms of output. You can definitely run multiple displays off of this card. And of course, as you can see, no external six pin or eight pin power. So we're only pulling from the 75 watts from our PCI Express port, um, which will be plenty for this card. So we'll go ahead and switch over our bracket and get it installed into our PC. So now, in order to install this into our topmost PCIe slot, um, you're first gonna wanna, of course, remove the cover from 
the graphics card. And then you're just gonna lift up this little tab on the back of the case. So it's completely toolless. You can pull out these um, bracket holders. So they're just sort of stand in brackets so that no dust or anything like that gets into the case. So we'll pull out the top two as we do have the two slots for this card. And now all you're gonna wanna do is sort of position it under these wires, get it in place. So now you can see that we're in place back there. You're just gonna wanna line up with the PCIe slot. So you're now lined up and just push down. So now we have the card installed in there, completely toolless, just close this flap back down and our card is installed and good to go. So now we are completely set. We have our graphics card installed. Everything else is good to go. Windows is already installed on our SSD from where we bought it on eBay. So now we can just pop the front panel back on. Just gonna click these tabs into place. There we go. And I'm just gonna put the side panel in on a slight angle. And click it in place. So now our PC is completely done. Like I said, super easy, super simple. Now you can see on the back, we have our display port and our HDMI port. Um, the PC itself has internal integrated graphics. Um, so we of course have a display port and an HDMI, or two display ports um, on the back of our motherboard using the internal graphics. But now we're gonna use our HDMI and our display port from this card. So now for our first startup of the HP Elite Desk 800 G1 with our i7-4790 and our newly installed GTX 1650. There we go, booting up. See if we get display out on our screen and there we have it. So as you can see, our screen scale is a little off and that is because we do not have the drivers installed for the GTX 1650. So I'll go onto the computer um, and start actually screen sharing. But the first thing you're gonna wanna do is install your graphics drivers. So for this card, we're gonna go to Nvidia's website and download the drivers for the GTX 1650 install those, and then we can start downloading our games and start gaming. So I'll go ahead, install the drivers, and then I can start screen sharing with you guys um, some benchmarks with Fortnite, Valorant, and Call of Duty Warzone. So after downloading our GeForce Game Ready drivers, as you can see, we're at the most up-to-date 446.14. Um, so we have our graphics driver installed. So now you can see our resolution, everything is much, much crisper. Um, if I go into display settings, you'll be able to see. So we're running on a 2560 by 1440p monitor. Um, we'll try our games at both 1440p as well as 1080 to see what kind of FPS we see at both resolutions. Most likely the system will be a 1080p gaming machine. So we'll probably stick to 1080, but in some titles like Fortnite, we'll take a look at 1440p. Um, and we're also capable of 144 FPS on this monitor. So we'll take a look at both the FPS, make sure we're not getting any lag in game and see what kind of resolution we can handle on our 1650. Um, the other thing that I like to do once I get a system started up is to go to control panel and because we can't actually overclock the CPU, what we can do is turn on performance mode for our CPU. So if you go to all control panel items, go to power options, and then if we go down to show additional plans, we'll go into high performance mode. And now we can see when we go into high performance mode that our processor power management minimum and maximum state are both set to 100%. So we will be pretty much going to our boost clocks at all times on our CPU. And we can check that by going into task manager. So if we click on the task bar, go to task manager. Now, if we go into performance, we can see our CPU running at pretty much 3.9, 3.85 gigahertz all the time. So we'll keep our CPU running at its max speed. 
So almost four gigahertz is extremely good, even on almost a six year old processor. Um, but with our four cores and eight threads, we should be able to see plenty of performance um, on this CPU um, for gaming. So here we are in Valorant. Um, and we're currently sitting at 1440p. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is turn our resolution down to 1080. Um, and we'll keep our max FPS off. So we'll go unlimited FPS and see what we can get in game. In menus, we'll stick to 144. But graphics quality based on this, we'll, we'll try to play all high settings. Uh, we'll keep VSync off. We'll keep uh, anisotropic filtering at 4x. We can turn anti-aliasing on to MSAA two, plot two times, um, and that should be good. So we'll keep it like this. I'll have our FPS show, as well as our packet loss. Then we can keep our CPU frame time and GPU t frame time as well to see if maybe there's a bottleneck in the system. But we'll keep it like this, and we'll get into a game. So as you can see, our GPU and CPU frame times are pretty similar to each other. Um, so not a big issue there. We are dealing with a decent amount of packet loss, I will say that. So the server could be a little spotty, but overall our FPS is looking pretty good. FPS holding strong at like 110 FPS. See if we can get any action. You can probably hear the fans ramping up a little bit on the PC. And we'll check temps after this round. And that was unlucky, but we'll check temps after this round. Uh, let's actually check them now. So looking at our temps, you can see CPU at 80 degrees C. So it is pretty hot, but we're dealing with a pretty small cooler as you saw um, when I was taking it apart. If you take a look at our external GPU, now you can see 70 C um, and GPU utilization right around 67% sitting out of the game. Um, so now back in game, again, still right around 120, 130 FPS, depending on the scene looking out on a bigger spot around 110. So here we are now in Fortnite uh, and going back to Valorant, once I stopped screen recording, we did see about a 10 to 15 uh, FPS increase over what I showed in the actual screen recording. So it was around 130 to 150 FPS in game at 1080p, all high settings. Uh, so now going into Fortnite, we'll take a look at our settings first. So. What we're going to try to do is go windowed mode and go 1920 by 1080. So here are the settings that we're running. So we're running 2560 by 1440. Um, if we look at the rest of our graphic settings, we're running epic view distance and then medium to low on all of our other settings, VSync and motion blur off. So let's get out of the menu and get into a game. So you can see the FPS on the bottom left of our screen. So in the menu, sitting between like 120 to 200 FPS. So we might turn that down to keep it locked at 144 to see if we're able to maintain that. So let's go ahead and do that. Considering our monitor is only a 144 FPS monitor, we'll go ahead and do that once we get into game. And again, we are running at 1440p. So I will try to middle of the game, turn it down to 1080p to see what kind of performance we see at 1080p, considering that is what this card is most likely to be used for by most people. You can see now that we're on the ground, really maxing out at like 130 FPS at 1440p. Um, we will go ahead and 
hide away for a little bit and try to turn the FPS down to, or turn the resolution down to 1080p. You can see like if I'm standing still, we can hit that 144. As soon as we move around, we're dipping to like 120. So we'll go ahead and change to full screen 1080p. And now you can see we're getting right around 170 FPS, uh, bottoming out at like 150. So now you can easily play this game uh, at 1080p resolution um, and right around uh, right around 165 FPS. So if you had a 1080p 165 hertz monitor, you could easily play Fortnite uh, with this system on that monitor. So as you guys can see, we are now in Call of Duty Warzone. Just to go into our options really quickly. So in terms of our graphic settings, uh, we are playing full screen. Uh, we are capping our refresh rate at 144. We also have our render resolution set to 1920 by 1080. And the rest of our settings are either normal or high for the most part. Um, I'm really doubtful that we'll hit 144 FPS, uh, probably around 60 to 70 FPS in this game. Even my 2070 Super struggles to get like 135 to 144 FPS um, at 1080. But we'll queue into a solo game and see what kind of FPS and performance we get in game. So now that we're in the actual game, getting ready to jump off of the plane, uh, right around 60 FPS, as you guys can see. Um, we'll see once we're on the ground, we should see a little bit better FPS for sure, um, as we're not having to render in so much of the map. But yet again, keep in mind, we are screen recording all of this so we are, of course, going to be limited in terms of our FPS there. Probably with Call of Duty Warzone, we expect to see around 5 to 10 FPS more than what you're going to see uh, in game from, from this particular recording um, in this video. So probably slightly higher Hostile FPS, but inside the building, we can see 70 FPS. Um, so we're looking pretty good, you know? try to get into some action really quick but overall you guys can see right around 60 to 70 fps at 1080p in call of duty warzone which to be honest pretty good for a gtx 1650 the lowest end nvidia card in their current generation lineup but overall the quality um, and just the the really quick response of the game is really really nice on this system so Yet again, oh, well that guy was just terrible, but yet again, um, this game, Fortnite, uh, Valorant can all be run on this system at, for, for Warzone, right around 60 FPS, 70 FPS, for Call of Duty and Valorant right around 120 to 144 FPS, which is pretty insane for an i7 4790 and a GTX 1650. But yet again, you can find so many of these types of systems, whether it's the HP Elite Desk 800 G1 or an 8300 uh, SFF, Lenovo Think Center, or like a Dell Optiflex, you can find plenty of these systems that are already built for you. All you have to do is throw in a graphics card, maybe an SSD and some RAM, and you are all set to game. If you guys have any questions, any comments um, about this system, other systems that you guys are looking at, uh, be sure to leave those below. I'll be happy to answer any of the questions that you guys have. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel.